In this exercise, we'll examine the pseudo-element selectors of CSS. And these are a little bit different from the pseudo-class selectors. And you can always tell when you're looking at a pseudo-element selector because it has two colon symbols side by side. And there's only four of them. Okay, let's take a look at the first line pseudo-element selector. Now in our HTML, we have a paragraph element that has a couple of break tags in it. Let me get rid of those forward slashes because you don't need those anymore. So this paragraph element has two break tags in it. So it's going to have three lines of text. And we also have an unordered list that has three list items within it. So what first line does is it targets the first formatted line within the element. And let's see what it renders. So you can see the first line all the way up until the break tag in the paragraph gets styled. And then the first line in the list gets styled as well. So you can use this pseudo element selector anytime you need to target or select the first formatted line within an element. Now let's examine the first letter selector. And the terminology should let you know by itself exactly what it's going to do. It's going to target the first letter within the text node inside of the element that you specify here. So you can see we have two P elements, and all they have in them is regular text. Let's see what it renders. So by the looks of things, it would be especially handy if you're a storybook writer online, and you can have all of the first letter in your paragraphs or whatever be uh, bigger and styled differently or whatever. And there's other situations you would use that for, but that'd be a good one. All right, moving on to the before selector. And this one's really cool. The before and after selectors are really cool and handy. So you can specify any element or selector type here. And then you put the before pseudo element selector right next to it. And then you specify content that's going to be placed before the content that's in the element. So basically right here before it says the word paragraph, there's going to be content placed into the element. Let's see what it does. So you can see the string that I put in the content property is inserted before the content within the element. Now you can put a whole lot more than just string content there. Let me see if uh, my code editor will bring up options here. Yeah, these are all the things all the options you have for your content property. So the string is just one of many options that you can use for your content setting. Now the after pseudo element selector is very much similar to the before selector, but it just generates content after the content in your element. So you can see we have string content of paragraph content. Now this string is going to be added after giving you this Okie dokie. And remember, content can be one of many options. It could be much more than a string. You can do many things. You could put it, even an image could come after. So you see, we get this kind of result if we use the URL setting for the content property. And that uses this setting that you see right here. I have the string, the custom string that I want, and then the image. And they both render after the content. 